So now in the past couple of videos, we've been establishing reproductive isolation mechanisms. And we looked over prezygotic mechanisms for the reproductive isolation that allows for speciation events to occur. What we're going to be doing now is sort of shifting focus and saying, let's say the zygote does form. Let's say we do have an offspring. Let's say we do have the possibility even of an offspring because fertilization did occur. Are there still mechanisms out there to prevent reproduction, to prevent the further reproduction, let's say, even though we've already done fertilization? What I mean by that is, and we'll entitle this next flowchart, Reproductive Isolation 3, is the following. So we'll call this Reproductive Isolation, and this is the last one, so it'll be Roman numeral 3. What we mean by that is, let's go back to our definition of reproductive isolation. Go back to that flowchart. That definition states that these are mechanisms to prevent members of different species from interbreeding, and this is where reproductive isolation 3 is important, and prevent the production of viable and fertile offspring. This is what we're going to be looking at in this flowchart. Viable and fertile offspring. Do we get that after fertilization? Let's see. So what we're going to call this um, is the subtitle of this would be post-zygotic, so after zygote formation barriers. So there are three post-zygotic barriers that are involved in reproductive isolation. Number one is the following. Number one is called reduced hybrid, and there's that term again, we defined it previously, we'll reiterate, reduced hybrid viability. So we have to know two things as we go through this flowchart, the idea of viable and the idea of fertile, viable and fertile. So what is reduced hybrid viability? Well, what happens is we get a hybrid, and a hybrid is a combination between two different species, okay? But what happens is that their viability, their ability to live, let's say, to be viable is dramatically reduced. So much so, we call this type of um, post-zygotic barrier a barrier that is um, directly tied to genetic incompatibility. Um, incompatibility, sorry. Incompatibility. So much so that even though a hybrid is formed for however long, what actually happens is that though fertilization does occur between species one sperm and let's say species different species egg, we do have genetic incompatibility that results in the embryo's death very early on. Embryo dies very early in development. So it does not even get a chance to be born. That is very dramatically reduced viability. Viability is simply the ability to live. And this is dramatically reduced even though we have a post-zygotic hybrid form. That post-zygotic hybrid that formed has a very, very short span of development and does not even develop fully. It doesn't even get a chance to be born. So that's one reproductive isolation mechanism. So just in case sperm does fertilize egg, we have this safe barrier to prevent that hybrid from being born. Well, we also have some more. There's another one. Number two, we can call reduced hybrid fertility. Reduced hybrid fertility. So now we're still talking about reduced hybrid something, but now we're talking about reduced hybrid fertility. So we have viability, and now we have hybrid fertility. Well, this means that um, the hybrid actually does get produced, meaning that the hybrid, I'll say, is produced. That simply means that the hybrid is born. It does get to develop. It does get to be born. It does get to live on this world. But it's produced in a sense that it actually ends up in this, when it's alive uh, on Earth, it's very sterile, or it uh, has very uh, limited or decreased fertility. So what does that mean? What does sterile mean? Well, sterile means, and this is an or, um, this, this idea of fertility is all about the ability to have offspring. If you're sterile, you have zero ability to have offspring. You cannot under any circumstances have offspring. And if you have decreased fertility, you have a very, very low chance of having offspring because your fertility, your fertileness, let's say, your ability to have offspring is dramatically decreased, dramatically reduced if you are a hybrid. And a hybrid, again, is the result of a post-zygotic reproductive event, right? It's the result of a zygotic actually forming. And what we mean by this, a good way to understand this is uh, first and foremost, 
The reason why you have this sterility or decreased fer fertility is because these animals, these organisms, actually undergo quite improper meiosis events. And the reason why their meiosis is improper is if you look at a certain example, uh, it will really drive home the point. The improper meiosis could simply be uh, looked at through the example of a mule. And a mule is a hybrid, if you did not know. It combines, it's the combination of a female horse, so it's a mating event happens between a female horse and a male donkey. So a mating event happens. So there are no prezygotic barriers between a female horse and a male donkey. All of those are um, hurdled by these two. But what happens post-zygotically, meaning that what happens after the male donkey's sperm fertilizes the female horse's egg, is you get a mule, which is a hybrid. But specifically, what you have to remember is that the female horse, if you look at its diploid number, its chromosome number, it's actually 64, and the male donkey, its chromosome number is actually 62. This doesn't match up, and because it doesn't match up, you can already tell that the mule will have improper meiosis. There is going to be problems in terms of creating a true haploid um, gamete in this mule, and thus you'll see it be either sterile or decreased in its fertility. You can see that quite obviously, simply because the chromosome numbers don't match up. You'll have improper crossing over, you'll have improper separation of um, chromosomes during anaphase. All of that is going to be very, very uh, dramatically reduced reduced or completely sterile in this mule that has reduced hybrid fertility. And finally, the last post-zygotic barrier that we're going to cover is called hybrid breakdown. And this one is um, sort of a step above the rest, simply because in this situation, what you actually do have is a first generation, and keyword here is first generation right now, just wait, hybrid breakdown. First generation uh, hybrid is actually high, is actually viable and fertile. First generation hybrid is both viable, meaning that it lives, it lives a good life, and it's actually fertile, lives such a good life that it actually can pass on its genes. It has the ability to have offspring. Um, and specifically, if it wants to have offspring, uh, cool enough, it actually has the ability, and this is uh, pretty cool to me, it ha it's able to mate with both itself, meaning that it can mate with another hybrid, okay, um, we'll say another hybrid over here, another hybrid that's much like itself, right over here, another first generation hybrid, or it can actually mate with either of the parent species that uh, created it. Okay, it can mate with either parent species because a hybrid is a combination of two different species. If you take that hybrid and let it mate with uh, one of the members of that parent species, you will have a uh, event in which we'll, you'll have hybrids offspring for the first time. But the key here is there's a breakdown. Though that the first generation hybrid is able to get past this reduced hybrid fertility and reduced hybrid viability, eventually it catches up to them. Eventually, reproductive isolation brings itself up and says, no, this should not be happening. This is not right. These two things are not supposed to be inter-specifically mating. In the sense that the offspring that are the result of a, after a first generation hybrid is able to mate with either another hybrid or an, uh, another parent species, um, the offspring are always, uh, they are just not, the offspring are not viable and they are also usually not fertile as well for the reason stated uh, before. So they're not viable, they're not fertile, this is hybrid breakdown. So first generation is okay, but later on, uh, second generation, third generation don't even have any chance of possibly being alive. So that covers our reproductive isolation mechanisms. Again, always remember, the idea of reproductive isolation is to prevent gene flow between other species. And so even though gene flow technically did happen post-zygotically, it didn't happen for long. And thus you will not see that gene flow extend itself beyond maybe one, maybe one generation, maybe one generation if we have this situation. But most of the time that gene flow just stops because of this reproductive isolation. All we're doing here, um, again, is preventing overall over here the idea of two different species interbreeding and producing viable offspring because it's not going to work in terms of a broad speciation event. It's not the right way to do speciation, to separate things into different species as defined by our biological species concept thus far. And that concludes reproductive isolation.